Hello and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. This video, I will be taking a look at some of the reactions that ethers undergo. So by the end of this video, the questions that you should be able to answer, as always, are what reactions do ethers take part in, and how can I use ethers as protecting groups in organic synthesis? So if you're looking for a little review on the properties of ethers or maybe how to synthesize them in the first place, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and take a look at the previous video I've uploaded on that. Okay, so we could start with, for example, diethyl ether. It's a very, very common ether. And how could we really split this in sort of in half, so at the oxygen atom? Well, if we treat it with a very strong acid, like HI, hydroiodic acid, we can actually get this ether, although it's very unreactive, to split into ethanol and ethyl iodide. So how does this occur? Okay, so we'll start with the diethyl ether. And we know that this oxygen is weakly basic, so it can be protonated by the hydroiodic acid, giving us the protonated ether here. And then now, because we have a good nucleophile in the reaction, we have iodide, that iodide can displace the entire ethanol in an SN2 reaction giving us very simply ethanol and ethyl iodide. So you can do this with hydroiodic acid or hydrobromic acid. It's slightly slower with hydrochloric acid, so it's not the best reaction, but usually stronger acids work very well. We could also imagine an asymmetrical ether where we have a tert butyl group on one side and an ethyl group on the other side. And if we treat this with sulfuric acid in water, so dilute sulfuric acid, we can actually end up with ethanol and this alkene product, so this is isobutylene. Okay, so this is slightly different than the previous reaction, so how does this occur? What is the mechanism? Again, we start with our ether, and we do still have a strong acid in solution, so that oxygen can be protonated by the sulfuric acid. And that'll give us, again, just as always, the protonated ether. But now, since we have a tert butyl group, which is a tertiary group, we can form a stable carbocation by the loss of this ethanol product. So we lose a molecule of ethanol and end up with the tert butyl carbocation. But this time, we don't have any strong nucleophiles in solution. We only have water and the bisulfate anion, which are both weak nucleophiles. So what can happen here is we can have water come in, acting as a base this time, pulling off the adjacent hydrogen, which can swing down to form a double bond and give us the alkene product here. Water is not an entirely poor nucleophile, so we would also probably get a little bit of the tert butanol product giving us an SN1 product, but we will also get a lot of this E1 product here. So those are a couple ways you can use to cleave ethers into their alcohol and maybe an alkyl iodide or alkene constituents. Another reaction that ethers undergo is formation of organic peroxides. So while this is not of incredible use in organic synthesis, it is an important reaction that I want to take a look at. So again, let's just use diethyl ether as our example ether. And if we take two molecules of this and expose it to just O2, so for example, if we leave a container of diethyl ether out exposed to the air, it will slowly react over a long period of time to form a variety of peroxides, but one of them could be this ether peroxide here where we have the two diethyl ether units connected by a peroxide bond, so an OO single bond. And this can be significantly dangerous because that OO bond is very weak, and organic peroxides, therefore, can decompose, and they often decompose explosively or violently. So if you're ever working with ethers in the laboratory, it's very dangerous to let them evaporate, or to leave them for a long period of time because they can react with air to form these explosive peroxides and that can be very dangerous. So like I said, not a very important reaction in organic synthesis, but it is very useful to know about in any case. 
Let's come back to synthetic organic chemistry for a little bit and talk about a pretty useful application of these reactions of ethers. So what if we had this molecule here where we have a carbonyl group on this second carbon here and also an OH group on this number four carbon. So imagine you wanted to add a methyl group to that carbonyl function and reduce it using maybe a Grignard reagent. So you could go through with that reaction and treat this molecule with maybe methyl Grignard, so methyl magnesium bromide, and using diethyl ether as a solvent, and then maybe following up with our acidic workup in water to give us this compound with the methyl group added to the carbonyl and the carbonyl reduced to an alcohol. Well, if you're observant about the properties of this molecule, this reaction actually would not proceed at all. Instead, you would get this product where the carbonyl function is left untouched and you've instead just destroyed your Grignard reagent to form this OMGBR sort of group here. Because we know that Grignard reagents and alkyl lithium reagents are sensitive to water, so this reaction would not occur with having this alcohol group here. And again, if you'd like some review on Grignard reagents or their reactions, please click on the video at the top of the screen here. Okay, so how can we add our methyl group without destroying the Grignard reagent and leaving our alcohol group untouched? Well, we can use what we call a protecting group in organic chemistry. And a protecting group is some group that you can easily install onto a molecule to sort of protect a certain functional group. And then you can perform your reaction that you want and then easily remove the protecting group at the end of the synthesis to expose the original molecule. And a very common way to protect alcohols is by using tert butyl ethers. So how do we synthesize that? Well, we can take the original molecule with our alcohol functional group, and we can treat this with tert butyl alcohol in a dilute solution of acid. So I can just write H plus here, this could be maybe sulfuric acid or any other non-nucleophilic acid. And if you remember from the previous video, this will give us the protected alcohol by a tert butyl ether. So now we no longer have a protic function to this molecule, we just have an O bonded to two carbons, which means that our methyl Grignard will not be destroyed. So then because we have the protected alcohol, we can go ahead and treat it with methyl magnesium bromide, in diethyl ether to add the methyl group where we have this part of the molecule and we've added the methyl group again and then we have sort of our OMGBR adduct before aqueous workup. And see this time we have not touched the alcohol because now it is protected in the form of an ether. So to get back to our original alcohol we can treat with a dilute solution of acid in water so our aqueous workup and that accomplishes two things in one. First, it deprotects the ether back to the alcohol, and it also removes the magnesium salt from the reaction to form our alcohol final product. So that's a very important function of ethers in organic synthesis by using them as protecting groups to protect certain functional groups in our molecule so that we can perform other more complex reactions. So thank you again for watching my video. I hope this helped you learn about the reactions of ethers. If you like this video or learn something, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Also, like my page on Facebook at Total Organic Chemistry and take a look at my website on the screen. If you are willing and able, please consider donating to my Patreon page, which really helps me to continue creating these videos for all of you.